Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. I right, make sure you check out uh, a few of our sponsors. All right, at Play Fast Football, we got uh, Game Strat, which is our sideline replay system. Number one, most reliable, most affordable sideline sideline replay system on the market. Used it last year. We absolutely love it. So check out Game Strat. Just Play Football, which is the uh, play draw play drawing tool that I use when I'm doing diagrams for clinics or if I'm drawing anything up for webinars. I use Just Play Football. They also have some uh, game plan stuff that they do where you can uh, put your game plan stuff into quizzes that your kids can be logged into the site and your kids can take the quiz. You can know how much they know about the game plan. So it's more than just a uh, playbook software. Uh, there's a lot more things that, that it does. So for us, it's if you really want to use that digital software to take your program to the next level, not only playbook wise, but uh, game plan wise and quizzes and multiple things you can do. I use it as a drawing tool. I absolutely love it as a diagram tool. I de uh, at Defensive Coordinator 1, which is a brand new app that just launched in January. We'll be using it for the first time this year. You have somebody up in a box that is logging real in-game uh, statistics that are then with the data that you've already input into the system with your opponent. Now that you're logging uh, the actual real game data, now you're able to use the real game data with the things that you already have logged in to make valuable in-game adjustments so that now you go in with a game plan. You thought you were going to get certain things out of 2x2, two 3x1, two, 10 personnel, certain things out of 20 personnel or 21 personnel. You thought you were going to get more gap runs and zone runs. You thought you were going to get more field runs and boundary runs or strong runs and weak runs. You thought you were going to get more passes on first down. Go into the game. All that stuff has changed. Now you have live in-game data rather than just kind of gut feeling and feel of the game. You now know exactly what they're doing out of each set on each down. So now you can kind of make in-game adjustments based on that live data uh, that you are recording up top. So going to be interested uh, in using it this year and seeing if uh, seeing how much it can help me make some in-game adjustments. All right, so, um, also, Max One, which is an app that streamlines communication, organization, and workouts all into one platform. You can set up your practice schedule. You can set up your summer calendars. You can message all right, uh, any parents that have the app or players that have the app. You can message them at any time if things need to change, if the calendar changes, if weather changes a practice, if games change and you need to change the schedule. Uh, if if you've got to flip games around, that can all be done all right, in the app. If kids go away on vacation and their workout is on the app, you can make sure that when they're on vacation, they can pull the workout up on the app. You can check as a coach to see that they've done the workout. You can check what they have inputted into the system. You can have leaderboards and performance awards on there. So if you're looking to streamline organization, communication, and workouts all in one platform, check out Max One. All right, and Dome Hats, which is the uh, headwear sponsor for me that I use um, with, with my football program and that I use with PlayFest. All right, it's custom quality hats, beanies, visors, run by former Florida Gator football players, uh, a guy that I coached against in high school. They understand coaches. They understand athletics. They know what we need. They know our hardships. They know what we go through. So Dome Headwear provides custom pro uh, and quality products, but at the same time, they also provide uh, a service that understands where we come from. They want to be in every state, every sport, every staff. Everybody uses hats. Use Dome Headwear. All right, it's a great quality product like this hat I'm wearing right now, and they're good people. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about if you're playing a 4-2-5 defense, how you're going to set the front. All right, so if you're playing a 4-2-5 defense and you're an over-front team, you're going to be setting the three technique. All right, so when there is not a tight end in the game, I have argued with, you know, lots of people all the time. Over, under, to me, is irrelevant when there's no tight end in the game. Most people are going to play with a three technique. Most people are going to play with a one technique or an eight shade. I would say that more... Over fronts are more one techniques or inside eye of the guard, if you want to consider that a two eye, all right, and under teams are going to play with more shade on the nose. That's just what I think with no tight end. Over under, that's about the slight nuance to it because any way you look at it, if there's no tight end in the game, you're an over front team, you're going to dictate where the three technique goes. If you're an under front team, you're going to dictate where the A shade goes, all right? So as a 4-2-5 team and an over front team, you're going to call where you want the three technique to go. So as a defense, you're always going to put the three technique where you want them, and then you're always going to understand where the open B gap is. All right, so when you set the front as a 4-2-5 team, there's lots of ways to do it. I don't think any of them are right or wrong. All right, it can be based on formation. It can be based on personnel. It can be based on field boundary. It can be based on coverage. If sometimes in certain coverages you're playing, you want the open B gap to a certain player. All right, so um, 
when you're setting the front in the 425, there's lots of ways to do it. Generically speaking, two by two, most people are going to set the three technique to the side of the back. Why are they going to set the three technique to the side of the back? If the formation is balanced and you are a two high structure, there's going to be an open B gap. The open B gap in that structure is usually going to be the guy that has to fall into the B gap, but he's also got some pass coverage responsibilities. All right, so you know you got to understand in a two high structure. All right, if you want to keep seven defenders involved in a run game and and be in a two high structure to help defend one extra gap with quarterback runs, there's going to be one guy to the open B gap side that's going to have a little bit of a conflict. Okay, so when you set the three technique to the side of the back, you can help yourself a little bit on RPOs because most RPOs are going to occur to the side of the back where the mesh is happening, although there are teams out there that do a really good job of running RPOs away from the side of the back so they can mesh the zone play on this side, but the quarterback can still read backside. So you're not going to totally eliminate in zone coverage in, in two high safety structures with an open B gap. You're not going to totally eliminate the RPO theory unless you lock one side, all right, to the open B gap. If you lock that side with your safety and let your will linebacker be a box player and you play man to man on the number two, that'll take the conflict off the will. If you gap exchange with your five technique and you send him into the B gap so that runs have to come out to the will, that'll take some conflict off him. But if you have an open B gap and you're, you're an over front team setting the three technique, you're always going to have the open B gap issue. The reason teams like setting the three technique to the back is when they're playing zone schemes, all right, they feel better that with the cutback version of the zone play, they feel better that when they get the zone scheme, however it's all right, working itself out, if the guard's got to scoop the mic or, or climb to the mic and the tackle's got to scoop the three, all right, they feel like if they're getting more scoop cutoff techniques on the backside and not true double teams, they feel like it's harder for the tackle to cut off the three, so that if the three is a good enough player to not get cut off, all right, he ends up in a position to be in better shape. If he doesn't get cut off by the tackle, he's in better shape to play the linebacker of the zone play. So they feel like they're going to be able to push the zone, all right, to the, to the front side where they want the zone to go. So now, however, you know, if they were blocking this to where they were working, if their point was declared out towards the will, and they were working this combination to the will and this combination to the mic, all right, they feel like they're going to get the nose one-on-one -on, -one on the front side when this guard has to push out to the will, or if this guard maybe works with the eye technique, all right, or he works with the tackle, whatever the scenario may be. If they, once the guard comes off, they feel like the nose and the two-eye or the one technique should be able to handle his front side A-gap because he shouldn't get reached by the center. So he should be able to handle his front side A-gap there. All right. The Mike is an A-gap player. When he gets his own scheme, he can get up and make sure when he plugs, he can take on the climber right now. And if he takes the climber on before the climber gets a chance to climb, he can kind of stalemate that. All right, right now. And then the cutoff on the backside three technique is tougher. So now when the zone play goes to wind back, you feel like you've got it in a situation where there's not as big of a, uh, of a cutback. All right, so a lot of people like to play three technique to the back and two by two to help with the zone play. If it's two by two and it's balanced receivers on both sides, you're going to have an open B gap. You're going to have a falling guy unless you play a rotated down three deep and six man box or you play... Uh, more of a six-man heavier box with man-to-man -man on the backside, you're always going to have a B-gap fall-in player with two-by-two balance sets. You can't do anything with the B-gap other than change coverage or stuck into the B-gap. So most teams, two-by-two, two, set the three technique to the back because they feel like it helps them All right, more versus the zone play. All right, I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just telling you conventional knowledge. People feel like the three technique to the side of the back versus zone schemes helps you play the cutback of the zone bed. All right? When you start getting into three by one sets, now you got a decision to make as a coach because now, as, as a defensive coach, you got to figure out what your coverages are and where you want those falling gaps to be. And so, you know, now for argument's sake, when you get into three by one and it's a one back set, all right, it's not balanced. So you can't just say, if you want to set it to the back, it's a one back set and you set it to the back, that means you're going to set the three technique over there which now means you've got the open B gap to the trips. What coverages are you playing to the trips? And is your fall-in B gap player, all right, is he also a guy that can possibly potentially be RPO'd? Or, so, you know, your two standard versions of coverage that you might have is, 
if you've got your apex player in between two and three and you're playing palms on one and two, all right, your Mike's a box player, your Will's a box player, and your backside safety is playing a poach technique or he's playing a, a three vert technique. Okay, well, now you got six man box, you should be able to handle all six gaps, but now you're outside leverage on a number three, so if they run any type of inside zone RPOs where they lock the box, all right, now they got the box locked to where they got this all blocked here, all right, and now they're going to RPO him and they're going to run the stick route. And he's a big gap fitter, but at the same time, he's a guy that's got to get underneath number three. All right? Is that going to be a little bit of an issue for you if you set the three technique to the back? All right? If so, it's the same deal. You can run games. All right? Take the big gap away so the mic can get a little bit wider. You know, I mean, that you, you understand as a coach, if you set the three technique to the back and they're in trips, and you know that you've got trips away from the three technique, you know what the issues are. You can fix it as a coach. So the good thing is, no matter what you want to do with the three technique, all right, you can fix the, you can fix the issue as a coach with movement. All right, another way you can fix the issue is with post snap movement with the three and the one. All right, so at any time, most over teams are going to carry a stunt. All right, we call it blood. Take post snap the three and the one. The one's going to become the three. The three is going to become the one. And now you got yourself a post snap movement, which puts the three technique to the trip side post snap. Okay. As a coordinator, you know where the open B-gap is, you know where you're setting the three technique, so you know what issues are, you can fix them, all right? If you set the three technique, all right, to the trip side, or you post move, post snap move, you know, now your issues are going to be, again, if, if, if the three technique is to the trips and this is the coverage you're playing, your mic is technically an A-gap player, he's also the short wall of three, so now these RPOs with stick routes to three and inside zone lock box theories might become a little bit of an issue. All right. If you play a coverage where on the front side, you're going to ask your mic to get out a little bit. Okay. So you're going to ask your mic to hip out here and you're going to bump your wheel down and you're going to use your backside safety to help you on backside runs because now on this side, you're going to play man on one and then you're going to play your safeties in a palms or a two read theory on two and three. Okay, so now really with one eliminated, we get back to playing, all right, a two receiver set. So now we get back to that same seven man box theory versus one back runs. All right, so now if you eliminate number one from the picture because we're playing a man, now we've got two receivers, one back, just like we did in two by two. We've got seven guys ready to play all the open gaps. And now with the three techniques set to where the mic is, he doesn't have to go anywhere on inside runs. So he, on these RPOs now, he can kind of, be in this area underneath the stick of three. It's not as clear of a throw for the quarterback. It's not as clean of a read because now with the seven man with the seven man box in theory, with this weak safety being able to help us automatically down and us being able to push the will over a gap or over to the trip side because of the coverage we're playing, it's a little bit easier for us to set the three technique to the trips with that coverage. All right. So sometimes you might want to set the three technique in three by one based on the coverage. Okay. Two by two, you set them to the back. Well, here's what starts to happen, in my opinion, and what's happened to us in the past. Now you need linebackers, if they're setting the front, now you need linebackers that are really smart, because you can't just say one back, because one back two by two and one back three by one, we're setting the three technique in different positions. Then if it's three by one, you've got to tell the Mike linebacker, if it's this coverage, set the three technique here, but if it's this coverage, set the three technique there. Now you're getting into multiple ways to set the three technique, which is great for game plans, and it's great for chess matches. Don't know, depending on where you coach, your defensive staff and your Mike linebacker and your D lineman, that chess game isn't always the best option for you. But just understand that that's part of football. You've got to pick and choose what you want to do. So if it's two by two, set them to the back. If it's three by one, probably figure out your coverages, all right, and understand where you want to set the three technique if it's three by one. Okay? Now... When you get into two back sets, when you get into two back sets, all right, usually the issue with two back sets is you're going to try and set the three technique wherever that fullback goes. So if it's 20 personnel with a heavy sniffer, now when you're in two back sets, you want to set the three technique where you think you get in the gap scheme. So if you're playing a power counter team, set the three technique to the sniffer because you feel like it puts you in a better position. They have to double a three technique now instead of having an open B gap to run the power or the gap scheme at your apex fallout fall in player is there and then depending on what you do 
all right, on the backside to gain your extra defender. But now you feel like, you know, you've got a situation where at the front side of the gap scheme, you feel good about the fact that they got a double or three technique. Well, if they're a gap team, they probably carry, you know, they probably carry counter as well as power. So now when you get counter, now you're going to get the gap scheme back to the front side. So you can't totally take away gap schemes with where you set the three technique. Because if they're a gap scheme and they run power and counter, you set the three technique to the sniffer and they run counter away, now you don't have the three technique to the side of the gap scheme. But most teams that I've seen, most teams that I've studied, two back with a true sniffer, they'll set the three technique to the sniffer side to help them with the gap schemes. Don't have to do that. All right, again, you have post snap movements that you can make. You can sit, hit the three technique, happen to be set away from the sniffer here, all right, and you thought you were getting your power schemes or whatever it may be, you could have post snap movement. All right, so if your front was set like that, you could take that end and crash them down in there and make the ball go out here to the apex and the willy running over the top. So there's always ways to handle it, but just understand that if you're going to set the three technique to the sniffer and a team runs, if they run power only, set them to the sniffer and now versus your gap schemes, you got the three technique on the front side. If they're a counter team, you can't just set the three technique to the two receiver or to the sniffer side, I'm sorry. Can't just set the three technique to the sniffer side to take away gap schemes because now when they run counter, you haven't taken away the, the counter play. They can run the gap scheme to the open B gap. All right, so if you know, the other issue is you get what if they're a split back team? Now you got to have a rule for versus a split back team. Now where are we going to set? There is no sniffer. Where are we going to set the three technique? All right, so that's why you also get into issues where you'll have two by two, set them to the back. Trips, we want to set them to the trip side. All right, two back with a sniffer, we want to set them to the sniffer. But then you also have the ability to play, which is the easiest in my opinion. All right, if you want to play simple football and you want to get your kids lined up and go, play a bunch of field and boundary sets and tell the three technique where to go based on field and boundary. So set the three technique to the field, set the three technique to the boundary. All right, now what you'll know is you'll always know where your open gaps are, so you'll know how to handle those regardless of where they come out and or regardless of what they said, if, if, if the ball's on a hash mark, all right, and you set the three technique to the field, you always know the open B gap, regardless of the set, you always know that the open B gap, all right, is going to be to the boundary. So once you set the three technique to the field, now you know where all your issues are going to be because you know that the three is to the field, all right, so now you know you can adjust your coverages based off of that, so you can play certain coverages to the field. You know the threes to the field. You know that that's the front, so if you get trips and you only like a certain coverage to the three technique, play field fronts and play that coverage because you know where the three is going to be. You know the open beat gap is into the boundary, so if you're getting certain things, if you get all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you get a, you play a field front and a field defense or whatever the deal is, and you get a two receiver set into the boundary, Okay, and let's say for argument's sake you're a field defense, so you leave that overhang there, and now into the boundary your formational check is a three deep deal. All right, so now you know if you get FIB or FSL, you know that you're a three deep team and he's got to come down and he's going to go to the middle. You know where the open B gap is. If they're, a, if they're a, a power counter gap team, you know the open B gap's going to be to the boundary, so now you run your stunts to the boundary so that you can get the ball sent where you want it to get sent. So... The other choice you have as a defense is to play field and boundary sets. So now you can set the front two and away from the back and one back. You can set it to the multiple receivers. All right. You can set it two trips or away from trips. You can set it field boundary. So now you've, you're getting into um, a realm of eight to ten to twelve different ways that you can set the front. Biggest question I'm always going to ask is how many ways can your kids do it? How many ways can your mic do it? How many ways do you want to make sure you have the front set exactly how you want it and the kids make mistakes and the front gets set wrong? Do you want the front set exactly where you know where it is and you want to fix the problems with defensive line movements? All right, It's all a coach's choice. There is no right or wrong in my opinion. It's up to you as a coach. It's up to your staff, your kids. Just understand that there's got to be rules in and over front with where you're going to set the three technique. You kind of dictate what those rules are. When we were a 4-2-5 team, we tried to make it as simple as possible, all right, and if we had to declare where the three technique was going to go, all right, we would always tell them that you're going to go three-man surface, all right, so we would say three-man surface first, we would say multiple receivers second, so that if there was no three-man surface, 
Set them to multiple receivers, all right? And then if it was balanced and there was no three-man surface, no multiple receivers because it's a two-by-two two set, we would then say set them to the back. So we would kind of give our Mike linebacker parameters to say, okay, is there a three-man surface? Yes, set them to the three-man surface. If there's multiple three-man surfaces, then there's probably going to be multiple receivers. So if it's a 22 set and it's double tight with a flanker, set the three-man surface to the tight end flanker. All right. If it's a double tight three back set and there is no multiple receivers, now you've got to choose as a coach within the game plan where you're going to set. All right. But as far as being simple, when we were a 4 2 5 team, we made it as easy as we could for the mic. Three man surface, set them there. No three man surface, find the multiple receivers. All right. If it's balanced and there's no three man surface, set them to the side of the back. So for us in, th in trips and three by one, a lot of times we didn't really have a choice of whether he was going to be to the back or away from the back. We, if it was no three-man surface, three-by-one open, multiple receivers, we were going to set the three technique to that side. So our Mike linebacker would come out in three-by-one open, all right, back in our 4 2, five days. If it was three-by-one open and he saw this formation and he goes through his checklist, is there a three-man surface? No. Are there multiple receivers? Yes. Set the three technique to the multiple receivers. And then it's on us to play the coverage we want to kind of help that out however we want to do that. So we made it as simple as possible with setting the front. Three-man surface, multiple receivers, all else is balanced, set them to the back. Two-by-two two set, set them to the back if there's no three-man surface. Then we would always play field and boundary, and now it's we know where the three technique is. There were some games where we played field and boundary the whole time. All right, There were some, there were some seasons where later in the season we... If we were having trouble with the Mike linebacker or we had injuries and we had a second or third Mike linebacker in that couldn't do it, we would play field and boundary the whole game. And we would just say, hey, look, field, set the three technique to the field, boundary, set the three technique to the boundary. This way we know, because as a coach, for me sometimes, if, if we're not lined up right and we're constantly confused with how to line up and that's what I feel like is causing us to get beat, then I'm just going to go back and say, listen, line up like this and then we'll fix some of the issues that we have, but at least I know that we're lined up. I would much rather, all right, to me as a coach in 20 years of doing this, okay, I would much rather, let's just say for argument's sake, it's, you know, too bad team, whoever it is, don't care what the scheme is. I would much rather know that all my hands are in the ground, ready to go, and all my guys are where they belong, ready to play, and we know what we're playing, okay, and you beat me, all right, because you're 11, all right, you're 11 players on offense, beat my 11 players on defense, okay? We know where we're supposed to be. We're lined up right. We're playing the coverage, and, and we're in what we're supposed to be in, and your 11 beat my 11. I would much rather live that way. When we lose because we can't get lined up and the 3 and the 1 don't know where to go, and they're changing late. So, like, for us, we used to play, uh, and, and this is probably why most good teams play with inside kids that can play a 3 and a 1. We used to play with strong side kids, so our 3 was the 3. So we would get lined up in a certain set, and our kids would, would call the front, shut left or shut right. And we'd line up like this. And then the mic would say, no, 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 shut right. And these two tried to move and go back there. Annoying as a coach. Probably why most people play these guys is guys that can line up in a one or a three so you don't have to change. But, you know, constantly changing the shut call. Shut right, no, shut left. The back would change. Shut right, no, shut left. Got to a point where I said, you know what, guys? Field boundary, put the three technique there. We'll figure out the problems with D-line movement. Hands are in the ground. Kids are ready to play. Let's go play. That's kind of where a lot of the, um, you know, for me, that's kind of where a lot of the play fest theory, ideology, philosophy came from. Got kind of tired of not being lined up. Got kind of tired of multiple chess matches and doing a little bit too much. So kind of scaled it down and said, okay, look, when we were a 4 5 team. Field boundary, that's where the three technique is. We know where he is. Here's the issue. Okay, then go field pirate. Here's the issue. Go field blood. Here's the issue. Go field rub. Here's the issue. Go boundary rub. Boundary pirate. Set the three technique where you want them. You know where he's set. You know where the problems are. Fix it with pressure or D-line movement or something else. That's kind of the ideology behind play fast. Let's get hands in the ground, guys lined up, ready to play. All right? So you can set the three technique as an over front team where you want them. You can dictate where you want to set them. You can have multiple rules for how you set them. You can set them to the back, away from the back. You can set them to the field, to the boundary. You can set them to the trips, away from the trips, to the sniffer, away from the sniffer. Multiple ways to do it as long as your kids and your coaches understand it. The more they can handle on their plate, put more on their plate. Give yourself flexibility. The less they can handle on their plate, put them where you want them. Get his hand in the ground and let's go.
All right, guys, I hope that helps as far as setting a three technique and a four two five or an over front defense. All right, uh, as always, guys, just remember to check out our sponsors. You won't play well until you play fast. Hope it helps. Check you guys next time.